get letters that these meetings are happening. We have to depend on the people down the road. And the other thing is about power poles. We don't have any power poles above the cell site. So the only thing we're looking at is the cell site. And all the camouflage down on the ground is not going to make a bit of difference because that's not the problem. The problem is the pole. And uh, I don't even think the owners of the property are uh, interested in having the pole there now. You know, they've kind of ex expressed their concern with it. So, you know, uh, it's a bad deal. And I'm just uh, saying no to it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Andre, followed by Lisa Piscini. I'll keep it short. I believe my wife said just about everything we need to say. Um, yeah, I was just flipping through the internet right before we got here, and I realized that, you know, the parent company, the company that owns a lot of stock in Edge Wireless is AT&T, and because of their telecom, um, they reported a $3.6 billion uh, profits this year, which is huge. I mean, billions. Um, so something like this, it's it's really hard to see the 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 local level love from a company that's so big that that you know everything to them is just margins. Um, and like everyone said, uh, as far as safety goes on that corner, so yeah, there's there's five houses a stone's throw away. If anyone crashed, you'd you'd hear it. And you know, with California making it illegal to to talk on your cell phones while you're driving, unless you have some kind of hands-free thing, um, you know that. Just, just takes the whole, you know, idea out of that. Also, uh, you know, what's what's a couple minutes of coverage? Oh, hey, you know, I'm coming up to a, an area here. Let me call you back in a couple of minutes. You know, what's the big deal? That's that's all I have to say. And pretty much, you know, it's, this thing is going to be perched above our property. Um, you know, with the way the economy is going and property values um, potentially dropping because of something like that, or, or you know, it just really came up here to live in a nice, peaceful place away from the city and you know we moved up here a few years ago and we take nice walks on our property and it's just beautiful and to see a big ugly pole that it's probably going to have a blinking light on top of it and and all that it's just I don't know it's, I am against it thank you <laughs> thank you Lisa Piscini please and that is the last speaker card I have. Any additional requests to speak, please fill one of these out and turn it into a clerk. Hi, my name is Lisa. And my property borders right where they're going to put the power, cell tower pole. And my plans are to build a house there someday. And that would be right next to my view of the cell tower pole. Um, and I'm not happy about it. And I just, that's not what I want to look at, and that's not why I bought the property. So I definitely oppose it, and I'm sure there's sites out there that people don't care about, but it's just not where I want to put the cell tower. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pacini. Any additional speakers from the public that want to Can comment on this? Can I one more Give you one minute. Less than a minute. Okay. Uh, I heard before that uh, Edge Wireless is considered a public utility. Um, if there's such a public utility, why don't they put their towers down by the road in the utility easement, the public easement? Why do they have to go up on private property to do it? You know, there's no reason. And obviously, maybe they've talked to PG&E about using their easement, and pg and is not going for it. You know, there's pg and is electricity, and then there's AT&T or, you know, Pac Bell is telephone. Hey, and those are welcomed utilities. Those are your public utilities. This is more like just a money-making, profiteering operation, to me, and it's not needed. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Wolf. Okay, I'll close public comment at this point and bring it back to uh, the appellants. You'll have five minutes for your final comments, and then we'll bring it back to staff after that. <laughs> Thank you. Again, Alan Potter for Edge Wireless. Just in re brief response to some of the comments this evening, I appreciate the neighbors being here again today. I know this is an inconvenience for them, but nevertheless, uh, questions and concerns about safety. I think that's very important. And I think it's great that you'll have more than one safety feature in that area or in any part of the county. So let's not just look at, well, we have one call box that will serve five miles. Let's look at the fact that a cell phone user 
stops to help someone who's stranded or in an emergency situation can immediately use their cell phone in that area and get the help that's needed and not have to go five miles or whatever it is to get to a call box. So I think safety is a very important excuse me, issue here. The concerns about the visual aspects of this, if you looked at the photo sims that we prepared and some of the other photos in the area, you will see power poles, houses, and so forth on the ridge, on the hills around the site area. So this is not something unique. This is not something brand new. This is something that is similar to what is already in the neighborhood. As far as issues concerning property values, there's never been any documented evidence, to my knowledge, that cell towers devalue property. In my experience in this industry, when I worked in the Seattle area, um, the carrier I worked for there commissioned a real estate appraiser to go into a neighborhood and do an appraisal on homes that were adjacent to or near a cell tower, and then to go down the road and do an appraisal on homes that were not near the cell tower. And the only <coughs> difference she found was that the homes near the cell tower were on the market a few days longer than those not, but there was no difference in prices for those two sets of homes. So th there's just no evidence that property values are affected by cell towers. As far as the health issues, this wireless communication facility meets the FCC guidelines, and we have substantiated that with our report, and that is in the planning department's file for this application. So we feel that we've met that test and meet the, the FCC safety standards. As far as locating cell towers in the public right-of-way or in public easements, uh, in PG&E facilities, that would be something that we could consider, but not every cell tower can be located in those narrow confines. Wireless communication requires a network of towers that spreads out through the community and gets into the areas where the service and the signal is needed. So it's, it's not just as easy to say, well, put it on a power pole or put it in the public right away. It doesn't work that easily. And in this case, it certainly didn't work for, for us, for our advantage. We believe that this site can exist in this neighborhood and be a good neighbor. There is no, no plans to put a light or no requirement by the FAA to put a blinking red light on this tower. It doesn't create noise or vibrations or odors. There will be a service technician that will visit the site once or twice a month. Other than that, it's an unmanned facility. With that, um, I'll close my presentation. If I can answer any additional questions, we would ask that the board review this application and seek your support of our appeal and approval of this use permit application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Any questions of Mr. Potter at this point? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, back to staff. Um, Mr. Lynch, any final remarks? This is a tough one in that um, the wireless guidelines, and they are just guidelines, they're not an ordinance. The guidelines talk, it says, says highly visible sites and sites within or near residential areas or schools are the least preferred and will only be considered where there's compelling evidence that <clears throat> no other less visible alternative exists. When, um, I think as the RF engineer pointed out, when Edge and some of these other carriers were assigned a frequency bandwidth, they have a need, they feel, due to meet their licensing requirements to provide their services as, as best they can. Um, obviously, they're going to target areas where they get the most um, bang for the buck, whether it has the most traffic volume on, on their facility. Uh, this site is difficult in that because you can only really address aesthetics, they've taken the health argument away from you. And the only thing you're really left with from a <coughs> local planning perspective really is the, the uh, aesthetics of it. This is a difficult one because there's 